the stiff one of the week. This is a favorite of mine. I, I, I remember this a long time ago. Uh, I timed that about perfect. Yeah, that was that was great. I, I was talking to you too, by the way. So, it's, um, oh, I'm the, sorry. <laughs> it's, it's I, I good. couldn't. I couldn't hear. I couldn't hear you off, off my impressive stream. I was throwing. Listen, whether you're here or not, there's a show. <laughs> um, this goes back to the, uh, the the heyday of the shoot interview before all the podcasts and all the behind the scenes programming on the WWE Network. Before we showed them the way to do all that. Damn right. Um, when I'd get photographs from my friends at Titan Tower of you shoot uh, DVD boxes on people's desks. Um, so we're going to go to, uh, this wasn't a kayfabe show. This was by when Ring of Honor was doing the shoots. And uh, Gabe, Sapols Gabe Sapolsky, take two, was hosting Ken Patera. And I think Gabe made the mistake of asking him about his arrest before getting permission to do so. Well, we're on the subject about yeah. controversial things. This is something that you know I was going to ask about when you were arrested for uh, what happened at the McDonald's. Um, I don't, uh, fuck you. I don't want to talk about that shit. You want me to choke you out now or later, you cocksucker? I don't talk about that bullshit. We have plenty to talk about. You know, fuck about you know that bullshit about me. It was all set up and everything anyway. I spent two years of my life in that fucking stinky old prison. And, uh, you know, that was under McMahon's watch. I was wrestling for him when that, all that shit went down. Yeah, fuck it. Let's move on. Okay, right. sucker. Let's, let, let's cut the tape. Perfect. Short and sweet. <laughs> I loved it. I listened. I, had, I rewound yeah, I, and listened I, to I, that 6,000 times, I think. You, you can... My dad, fucking Bob, was fucking so fast to go to the cocksucker. Because <laughs> fuck was everything. Fuck, he was like me. Fuck, 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 fuck. But when you when you look at somebody and go, you fucking cocksucker, like that's that's the fucking that's the one where you're like that like the next thing that's coming is a fucking you're gonna get a fucking are you gonna take a fucking blow. That's when shit gets serious, right? Because because yeah. motherfuckers even different. I can I can go to you, ah come on, motherfucker. Do you know that's there's a playfulness to motherfucker. Yeah, it's kinda hard to get around cocksucker. You can go yeah. Unless you, yeah, it was like remember that there was that comedian I went it was dude. Unless was you like, suck cock, right? Because then it's just uh, then it's just. Well, accurate. then it's like this. And then you just say this thing, cock sucker. Eh? Or, you, but to me, if you say, like, no matter how you just, if you just, if you just say it like, cock sucker, like that's not nothing's good. That's not. That's not like, you know, home run. Fuck! Mm -hmm. You know, orgasm. Mm -hmm. Fuck! Cocksucker. Yeah. Somebody breaking your house. Fucking, you got a gun in your hand. Yeah, die, cocksucker. Yep. Say hey! Uh, yeah. Uh, Patera, uh, I don't want to get off Ken yet. Uh, what did you do? You get along with Ken? Did you have you been in his company? Never, been, never really have, have, have spent any time with him. Just always had a lot of respect for him. Yeah, you know because he was fucking. He was a great fucking lifter. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, he was a fucking big, strong. He was a five hundred pound bench press fucker. Like back oh. when you know, you know, none of this shirt shit. You know, Ken Patera is a fucking man. Yeah, I mean, and I give a fuck like. If you don't get, I don't know how many people out there have done any kind of fucking time, but you don't fucking just bring up two years of fucking somebody doing fucking time. Like it's, oh, the McDonald's incident. No, motherfucker, it was two years of my life in a fucking stinky fucking prison, is what he said. No. Well, I, I enjoyed this segment, but, I, I, but I, I do feel that when you interview somebody that, you know, that, that anything worthwhile uh, uh, noteworthy i should say i can't life, believe you that, have to ask about you i can't to. believe that fucking like if i was ken i would have i would have had that that i would have owned that piece of tape that would not be fucking circulating oh that was released that was put out that, as part of the the dvd I know. release yeah and i'm just saying that that would not it, I, I would finish i'd be done right there i would have got up and we would have been finished and I always said, now we can start over, and that never sees the light of day, or 
we're fucking done. And, uh, and I'm sure Ken was like me, you get your money out of time. So he, um, <clears throat> I never worked with Ken. I wish I did. My favorite Ken Patera story, though, was <clears throat> we were waiting for, uh, there was a flight that was delayed. I had to do a shoot with uh, Greg Gagne, actually, and he, the flight was, there was snow in Minnesota, so it was taking forever. So we're sitting in the hotel bar, and it's one of those deals where the convention's in town, right? So the, the all the boys are in the bar, and I think Honky was at our table. I'm just sitting, waiting. And I'm watching, and I can see the, the door, the main entrance of the hotel. Guys are coming in with their bags. Some of them go right to the bar. Some of them go to their room, whatever. So I see Ken come in, and Ken is driven by somebody, and he walks, uh, the guy walks Ken into the bar, and he finds the other shoot interview producer that is working with Ken that night, and he points him, he's like, yeah, you're working with so-and-so over there. Now, this shoot interview producer is drinking a banana daiquiri. Now, we're in a bar with wrestlers, so it's green and brown bottles everywhere, except this guy who's got a banana daiquiri that he's sipping with a straw. He might have even had an umbrella in it. Ken, from across the fucking bar, in his booming voice, looks over. He goes, him? He's got a cunt drink. <laughs> he's screaming. Everyone looks at him. He goes, I'm working with the guy with the cunt drink. He just walked in from outside, and he's screaming the cunt drink in the bar. Loved him from that day forward. How can you not? Man's man. Man's man.